Hello, I'm going to show you how to create a bibliography using Fintana's online reference generator. What you're looking at right now is a bibliography that I've already completed. Each one of these items in the bibliography is called a citation. In order to create a citation, first you're going to need to look at um, your source of information and have a good look for the types of things that you are going to need to include in a bibliography. So let's have a look at this website that I am going to use for my science project. I need to know things like the name of the website, the company, and when it was made, who made it, things like that. So up here I can see very definitely that the name of this website is the Ocean Cleanup, and this is the name of the article that I'm interested in. In order to find out who made this and where it was made, I'm going to need to scroll right down to the very bottom and to look for things like the About page and the Contact page. So if I click on About, we can find out who it is. They're called The Ocean Cleanup. Very definitely, that's an organization. And in fact, I can see it down here too, as well as the date that this website was last updated. And to find out a little bit more about where they are, if I click on the contact, normally I can find out where their headquarters are. So let's scroll down and see if we can do that. Oh, maybe I went too far. There we go. So the Ocean Cleanup headquarters is in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. That's the kind of information you're going to need to um, create citations in your bibliography. So let's get started with this um, website. Uh, in order to open up the generator, you need to go to the library web page. You'll need to scroll down just a little bit until you get to this taskbar. And online reference generator is right in the middle. It's the little icon with the cloud. And here is the first page. There are um, some little pieces of advice right here before you click on Let's Begin that's worth a look over. It's just alerting you to the fact that there are a lot of different types of sources of information, so you need to know what you've got in order to um, cite it correctly. When you're using the bibliography generator, um, if you roll over the little boxes, it'll help you um, to clarify if you're not quite sure what they're asking for. And last of all, it does say that you enter details into the boxes and then you copy and paste it into alphabetical order into your bibliography. So let's begin. So what I was looking at was a website. And you can see all the different types of referencing that is possible. I see here website. And it was a web page. It didn't have an author. Uh, it was a, wasn't a web page without an author. It was a web page from an organization. So that's what I'm going to click on. I need to type in the name of the organization. It was called the Ocean Cleanup. The year that it was posted, well, I can remember that it was 2020. The title of the web page, I think I might need to go back. I've kind of forgotten. Let's scroll back up to the top. The largest cleanup in history is what I need to type in there. Fantastic. So was there a sponsoring body? No, it was the name of the organization. So it wasn't sponsored by a government or a department. The place that um, their headquarters was in was Rotterdam. So I'll pop that in there. Today's date will show up automatically. And then the last thing you need to insert is the URL, which is the address up here at the very top that uh, you would use in order to Google. Or if your teacher um, wanted to just have a little look at the website, she'd be, they'd be able to click on that link. All of my spaces are filled. Now I just hit Create Citation. And here is the part where you're going to copy and paste it into your bibliography. Now I've already done that just right here. Um, 
And once I hit the return button after I've uh, pasted it in, it will actually activate the um, URL link so your teacher can have a look at it. Okay, so that's how you do a simple website. What happens if what you're looking at isn't a website? What if it's something else? So for example, um, a newspaper article. Okay, I have one here. It's, it, it is actually a little, uh, it's a, a little bit related to the other one. This is a story about the man who created um, that website. And, and in fact, the, um, the technology that they're using to clean up the ocean, he um, invented it as part of a high school project and he raised millions of dollars and got it off the ground. And now it's, now it's happening as we speak. So if I had read this and wanted to use some of the information out of it um, to talk about the, the man who started it, how would I do that? Well, again, I'd go back to the generator um, and I would say newspaper article. I'm actually going to say it's printed, even though it's online. The newspaper article originally uh, was printed in a newspaper. And it wasn't part of a database, so I need to choose this, even though that sounds a little bit crazy. And was there an author to that newspaper article? Let's just go back and check. If I scroll down, I can see there is the author right here. That's the date that it was printed. And up here is the name of the newspaper that it was printed in, the age. So again, that's the kind of information that we are going to need to collect. Let me just shut that window and go back to this one. Okay, so I need to choose newspaper article printed with an author. And the author's family name I can remember was McCoy and his first name was Terence, but I don't need to write all that down. I just need to put T. And you can see when I hover or click on it, it does tell me what I need to put in here. And that was one of the tips that they had on the front page, a four digit year or no date. If there was no date, I do remember that it was 2016. And the article name was quite long. So I think I'm going to just do a copy and paste. Copy and paste. Yep. The title of the newspaper was The Age. The date was the 2nd February and starting number. Oh, well, we don't know that because it's not a printed, um, it's not actually a printed newspaper anymore. It's now online. I'm not sure if we can actually see what pages it was printed on. I can't see that it says that anywhere. So now we're going to have to try and just work our way around that. Um, and my workaround for that is just to put, it won't let you not put anything. So I'm just going to put one and one. That's probably not correct, but I'm going to actually remove it afterwards and I'll show you how to do that. So again, click citation. Here's pages one to one. So I don't really want that at the end. I'm going to again, copy and go back to my bibliography. You can see where I've already pasted it here, but because I know that information's not correct, I'm going to go like that. And in fact, I'm going to put a comma and I'm going to give my teacher the URL for it because they still might want to look it up. So I'm copying that. Oops, where's my bibliography? And I'm going to paste it in there instead of the page numbers. Okay, so my teacher can still look and see where I got my information from. Okay, so sometimes if it doesn't quite fit, do your best because the whole point is to give as much information as possible to show that you've done the work and to wherever possible have a link so that your teacher is able to check um, where you got your information from. The last thing I'm going to show you, and it's very important because lots of people use images, is that images are a source of information and you must create a citation in your bibliography for every image that you use. 
So I have found a website that has this really great image of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And in fact, if I scroll down, they have a high resolution photo of the Garbage Patch illustration that I'm able to download. So I would like to use that. And I can see there's a little symbol here and I can see there's a little um, website uh, URL in the corner there too. So maybe I do need to bring this up bigger so I can see what those are. So in fact, this is the name of the place where the image has come from, the National Oceanic Atmos and Atmospheric Administration, which is part of the US government. So let's go back to our generator. And this time we are going to want to say under website, it's image, it doesn't have a creator, it has an organization that's made it. So we're gonna to have to go with image without creator. And now we're gonna to have to fill in just like we did before. We're gonna take the title or description of the image. So where was that? Let's go back, garbage patch illustration it was called. I can see that right here. So I'll type that in. And it's asking for a format. And when I click on it, it says, is it a photograph, illustration, graph, map, chart? Hmm. I'm going to say it's a map, even though the title of it says illustration. It is a map. The year it was created, I couldn't see that anywhere. So it says a four digit year or n dot d dot if there is no date. So this time I'll have to use n dot d dot because I couldn't see one. The organization or sponsor for the image. Let's go back to that. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, US Department of Commerce, goodness. I'm just gonna say, oh, N O A A. I'm hoping to find something that's going to let me copy all that down a little bit easier than typing it in. Oh, there we go, just up at the top here. I'm going to take those and copy. Hopefully, that's worked out. I think I'll replace that bar with a comma. And just make sure it's all there. Today's date has gone in already and now I need to go back to this and copy the URL to that file or to that picture and I pop it in and again hit create National Oceanic. Ooh, somehow there's two commas in there for some reason. I'll have to fix that. And I'm going to once more capture that. Oops, I missed. Let's do that again. Let's grab all of it. Looks like I accidentally capitalized some things here at the beginning. There's GA is capitalized. I can fix that. I'll go into my bibliography. And let's say I'm going to fix that up a little bit. Now, you'll notice that I'm doing things in alphabetical order. And there's two commas there. I want to get rid of one. So I've got G, Garbage Patch, McCoy, and the Ocean Cleanup. Those are in the correct alphabetical order. I'm just going to hit. There we go, space. Those three things are now in my bibliography. They're in the correct order. They're as correctly cited as I could possibly manage. Um, and that's exactly how you're going to do it as well. So it's mostly uh, a case of knowing uh, a bit about your sources first, and that's something you should check before you even open the generator. Um, doing your best to fill in as many of the spaces as you can, and if you can't, try and follow the prompt that um, it gives you, and then putting things in alphabetical order. Good luck with your um, STS project, uh, and I hope this little video is going to be of help to you. Bye.